expecting praise. Singing it. Expecting great things. Expecting great things, great things. If you believe it, why don't you release a shout right there? Listening to Glory 93.9 FM, y'all. We late today. We sincerely uh, apologize. Um, I'm blaming it on Natalia, y'all. I am blaming it on Natalia <laughs> Wilson. She late. She was late today. <laughs> I have a baby. She was late today. Apparently, her excuse is she have a baby. And here's the thing: I ain't got a baby, so I can't relate. So I have no I, idea. I have the baby today. I off today. I have the baby today. And girl about to travel today. Right. So mine, like, all kind of things happening. It just kind of threw you girl So it's just rough. It's just a rough day. a little bit today. Understood. But we're late, but we're live. We're live. Mm-hmm. We're live. And I'm excited about our conversation yeah. for today. I'm excited. I was, yes, yes, um, yes, yes. actually, I was thinking about it a lot, actually, um, mm-hmm. as I was preparing, trying to, mm-hmm. to, um, I don't know. I, I so many things that uh, that we can talk about when it comes to to this topic. Our topic today is expectations. By the way, for those of you mm-hmm. who this may be your first time turning tuning into Girl Talk, you may be in your car and you're on you know you're on your little drive wherever you go, and you're like, "What is happening right now?" What's happening is every Monday it's supposed to be at eleven o'clock. No, it's eleven o'clock. It's supposed to start at eleven o'clock. It's not eleven o'clock. <laughs> Every Monday at 11 o'clock, there is a Girl Talk conversation here on Midday Glory, here on Glory 93.9 FM, on a gospel station. I know it's weird. But, yep, we are here. Hey, Nicola. And so we are having a conversation today about expectations. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing about Girl Talk is that, um, for those of you who this may be your first show, we are giving you two perspectives. Um, I'm single. Italia's married. But Italia was single almost as long as I've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Marisha? Bop you! <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. gosh. I just had to get that yeah, little one on my girl. That's, that's okay. That's okay. That's, just, that's, just, that's my last joke for the day. That's no, my man, last crack on Italia for it, the day. Man, another be a last one. But that's um, good. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> That was a good one, but yeah. So we, um, this is something that is it's it's been absolutely refreshing for us. And I just want to say that it uh, it is definitely impacting lives. So many people have sent me private messages, Italian said, Marisha, yeah. thank you so much, um, both of you for being so transparent and for sharing and and for having these necessary conversations. Okay. And so, thank you for all of you who are listening. That's our little preamble introduction to today's conversation. We're talking about expectations now i'm gonna start this in the churchy way oh boy. i can start this in the churchy way mm. there's a song um by israel and new breed right and israel he's talking and israel says israel says the atmosphere of expectation is the breeding ground for miracles <laughs> <laughs> And so he says it, and he says it in like in this like profound way, of course, right? Right. And then the singers in the background come. The atmosphere of expectation is the breathing ground, breeding, breeding ground for miracles. And from the moment we chose this topic, I couldn't get that song out of my head. Mm. So as I was putting on my makeup this morning, mm. I was processing this concept, and I said, you know something? Do you know what's really, really, really dumb that we do? Mm. I was considering what Israel was saying because is basically what Israel is saying. If you expect something from God, if you create an atmosphere of expectation, it opens the door for the miraculous. That's what he was saying. Mm-hmm. So what I was thinking to myself, Italia, something that's really dumb that we do, we expect things from human beings who can't really do anything, but we expect nothing from God. Mm-hmm. When God has given us so many promises, 
I we so place our expectations in flesh. Mm-hmm. The thing that God created. Mm-hmm. And we don't place any mm-hmm. expectations on God. Yeah. We don't expect anything. And then we go to God mm-hmm. after we've been disappointed by the human being. Right. That, that they said that to expect that the arms of flesh will fail. Mm-hmm. So the place that you told us not to put our faith and trust in right. and not to, you know, not to try to, you know, be so reliant on the place where we know we shouldn't really have such great expectations is where we place our expectations. Right. And we don't really. Yeah, I think that's dumb, but I'm, I, do, I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. We all do it. I do it all the time. We all do it. It's, um, <laughs> it's like I don't know if this is a good uh, analogy, but oh, it's like we train our we we train ourselves. Okay, we there's a there is the way to do with things. Yeah, right. Then we train ourselves to do it the opposite way. Right. We get expect we get um let down. We let down. Right. And then we try to go back to the way it is. I had this analogy. I was gonna draw. I don't know if I should say that on the radio. <laughs> Because I've been thinking about it. It's so weird. Like, oh, man, should I even say it? But it, it has to do with, like, like Dakota, right? Mm-hmm. As a baby. Mm-hmm. Like, I I got to thinking about it this week. I'm like, it's, a way, it's so weird that we train ourselves like, as a baby because it's a natural reaction. We just poop. Yes. Right? It's, it's a natural thing to right. do and, until right. we do it. Uh-huh. And so as the babies, they do it. So they, they grow up with the first... Um, God, year or two of their lives just doing what they yeah, have to do right. and then we say no that's wrong yes don't yes, do that yes I need you to do, so now we have to retrain ourselves all over again to you know do it another way when our when naturally we should be doing things a particular way that's the way we you know <sighs> yeah. yeah lord yeah it's yeah but, um, yes we, we 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 put our faith and our trust in um Oh, we put expectations. Let me just let me say yeah, use that word. Expectations in people and um, we expect so much from them. Um, but I think um what's even worse too is we put ourselves in a position we put ourselves in these positions we don't we don't express our expectations no. um to to the no. other party. And then we end up disappointed. And then we end up disappointed. We end up frustrated. Disappointed. Yes. Frustrated. Hurt. Yeah, frustrated. Hurt. Hurt. Um, I was thinking about it the other day and this is going back to how we even got to this conversation. And, and we, when we were talking last week, I was thinking about it and I was like, there were, there were some people, some situations in my life where I found myself like, like I was hurt. Like mm-hmm. I was angry um, in some cases because a lot of times when we do, we do things for people in general mm-hmm. as human beings for some strange reason, we believe that everyone is like us. Mm-hmm. No matter how we try to deprogram ourselves and say, that, okay, you know what? Everybody's not like you. You know, everybody doesn't think the way you do. Everybody doesn't operate the way you do. But for some strange reason, we get stuck in this, like, I don't know. Like, we always end up falling back to this thing. And then we get frustrated with people. And then when we look at our frustration at its core, we realize that, we're frustrated right now because we we expected someone to be like us and they're not. And they're not. And I I had um I had a situation recently where like I was extreme I was extremely disappointed. I was extremely extremely disappointed um in someone who was very close to me because I was I was intentional toward them, Natalia, when I say I was intentional. Mm-hmm. Like, there's nothing like when you know someone is dealing with something, mm-hmm. is when you know someone is going through something, mm-hmm. and it is your desire to ensure that you could do whatever you can to alleviate the burden for that person. And when I tell you, Natalia, I, I emptied my wallet that day mm-hmm. to, help. to make this person stay special. Because I knew what they were dealing with. I knew what they were going through. And and then the time came around for me. And I didn't even get a phone call. Wow. And then it was like maybe two or three weeks later when I saw the person, they were like, oh, by the way, like this is for you. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even like a, mm-hmm. they got it. And purchased it kind of thing. It was like something that they had, and they didn't were like, go, "No." So they're like, "You could have this." Mm. So I was like, 
Wow. I was hurt. Yeah, you should be. I was hurt. What did you do, though? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. And um, for two reasons. The first thing is, I said to myself, number one, Marisha, your expectation is that this person was supposed to do for you what you did for them. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because there was never an agreement between you and that person. Mm -hmm. So I corrected myself in that aspect. The second thing is, I asked myself, what are you hurt about? Are you hurt about something that this person promised you that they were going to do and they didn't do and I realized no that's not why I'm hurt because they didn't promise me that they were going to do it Mm -hmm. but I had the expectation that because I did this for you that means that in return you're going to do do this for me so I said well I mean that's not really fair to go to them with either because this is all happening on the inside of me Mm -hmm. I internalized all of this my expectation my anger my hurt my expectancy like all of that the things that I wanted to see the things that I was like anticipating all of that all of this was internal Mm -hmm. none of this was external none of this was communicated with my words Mm -hmm. I never said anything that would even lead this individual to think you know what I should have done something or I should have been there or Mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. I never, I never even like opened the door for this person even to like be there. Mm. But I had this expectation that they would come to the door, open it and push themselves in because that's what I did when I saw it was needed. Mm. So I had to internalize the entire thing. And I mean, I was listening to me. I had a conversation typed up in my phone ready to go and talk to this person and say, this is what I expected and this is what you did and I can't believe this and da 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 And then when I checked myself, I realized that there was, listen, this person had done absolutely nothing, nothing wrong. Wow. Nothing wrong. And I had this entire scenario in my head mm-hmm. of what I thought should happen, of how I thought things should be and how it should have turned out mm-hmm. and how I should have been treated mm-hmm. because of what I did <laughs> and I'm upset and da 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 and then I realized no Marisha yeah. no no this is all in your head and then what made matters worse Italia was that it caused me to look back at some situations where I had some arguments with some people with some stuff that was in my head mm-hmm. And now I'm like, I see why this person was looking at me like for I the was most, stupid. For the most part, for the most part, I'm a talker, right? And, um, well, especially my business. Yeah. Well, let's bring my mm-hmm. business into it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, try, I, tr- I try to communicate with my, like, employees. Yes. So I let them mm-hmm. know. Yes. But I, too, I realize that there are a lot of things I think, the overall picture, like what's expected, the I think the vision has been expressed. Mm-hmm. But I don't the heart of the vision. Yeah, I don't know if the heart of the vision has been expressed. But can so, can somebody really have? This is the, the the thing that I always the question that I always have. Can somebody really have the heart of the visionaire? Yeah, man. You think so? Yeah. Okay. They can this have girl heart. talk right. We talking real. We talking right. real. Um, I had a conversation with um, my boss the other day. Right. And I asked him, I said, do you ever get frustrated in what you do? Like, do you ever get to a point where you get bitter? Mm-hmm. Um, where the weight of what you do overwhelms you? And he's like, no. He's like, it never happens. He's like, I am in the place where I know this is what God has called me to do. Know. And he's like, maybe it's a protection that God has in my heart, but maybe. I've never been, I've never been bitter and doing it and so on and so forth. Like he's like, never, it's never happened to him. Wow. It's always been this place where he's like, I'm doing what God is supposed to, I'm, God has called me to do what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm good. Right. So I said to him, I said, honestly, I believe that that is the major difference between, I believe the visionaire and, and, and the persons who are running behind mm-hmm. the vision, I have the ability to get better uh, because it's not my heart. Mm. It's not my heart. Yeah. I'm supporting your vision and I'm ensuring that I do everything that I can to bring it to pass, but I have limits. I have limits. And okay. my limit is that there, there are such situations and circumstances that can happen that can cause me to become bitter. That can cause me to become frustrated. frustrated. That could cause me to just say, you know what? Bump your vision. I done. Mm. But in the heart of the visionaire, that could never, never happen. happen. 
That could no. never happen. No matter I can never say that. Either. No matter what opposition yeah. comes yeah. in your way. That could never happen to the visionary because it's like your baby and it's like you giving up on your yeah. child. Yeah. And you would never do that. that. Right. But the people who are supporting the thing that you're doing, it's it's different for us. Mm-hmm. It's different because, we, listen, we're not saying that we don't have the heart for what you want to do, you know. We're not saying that we don't have the heart of our visionaire. We're saying that we're easily swayed. We're easily swayed. And the only thing that can stabilize that situation is not only just a loyalty, but an understanding of where you fit in a vision. That's what's kept me. Where you fit in a vision. I can't even front. That's what's kept me. The loyalty that I have to what I know God has called me to do in the space that I have. The loyalty that I have toward that. And the confidence that I have that, no, I'm where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And then, I mean, the fact that God turned around and told me I couldn't go nowhere. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Okay. There's that. Okay. But I have to be honest with you, Italia. Like, there are a lot of times when I'm just like, you know what? Bump all y'all. <laughs> Bye. I got you. I got you. Bye. I turned it off my phone for a couple of days. I don't want to talk to none of y'all. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because this is this is along the lines of our topic of expectations. A lot of times you have this expectancy that things are going to be a certain way and then they just don't turn out to be that way. They don't turn out to be that way. And so even when it comes to like, and, and this is something that I'm learning too, like as I pull people in underneath what God has called me to do, mm-hmm. and I'm realizing that like, I have this drive and I have this goal, you know, like, cause we want to get things done. Right, and if, right, and right. like, if this, if this is our baby, mm-hmm. you want to see the baby handle right. Yeah. Ooh, mishandle my baby. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm learning how like, it's good for me to sow good seeds, even in my service of other people. Because my expectations of those who have to work alongside me now is like, why you don't get it? Mm-hmm. Like, how come you don't get like, it? Like, why are you not excited about it? Like, why? Why is your heart not there? Like, how come mm-hmm. this ain't causing you to lose sleep? This is causing me to lose sleep. I, 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 I like, I losing that. sleep over this. But you don't even you. losing sleep. Like, this, like you could go to sleep not doing the thing that you're doing your part. And what we have going on, mm-hmm. you could lose sleep. But here, here. but it's just because I think it's just our makeup. Like for some, like I'm not, I'm that type of person too. Like if I'm supportive and I'm all in, I'm all in. Mm-hmm. Like you say, like losing sleep, can't listen, wait. Um, you call and you text and you, what's up? Okay, what's on the plan? What's next? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm all in. I'm there. Yeah. And you have some people who just have that excitement about life in general and about where they are. And you have some people who don't. They don't have it. They just, they just lack that passion. They just like they like it. How, to, mm. boy, I tell you, and see, and when you look back at yourself, Marisha, and when I look back at myself, I see that I always had this excitement for others and for myself. Yes. I'm very from, from way back. Like so, I turn it from, from way back. How do you like what? Like, how do you live life? I know that sounds insulting. I but I feel in you. But what what you doing? What is your existence? Not all in. And and oh my gosh, I want to be careful because we're not being judgmental here. No, but I'm just trying yeah. to understand it. Yeah. Like I'm trying to like, how do you breathe? What what? No, not breathe. How do you get up out of bed? I don't know. And obviously something happened along the way because I was listening to I was listening to T D Jakes yesterday, uh-huh. one of his old um mm-hmm. one of those old sermons, and he was talking about frustrations and that kind of stuff and. And he was, he was he talked about getting back to that place, you know, where you were excited about life. Yeah, yeah. You were yeah. excited about smiling. Yeah, yeah. You were happy. You wanted to do that dance. He said, "Look, God created us with all of that. Initially, He created us with that happiness, with that um, passion, with that um, drive. He created from a, from a baby. He created that. He created us that way. But somewhere along the line, like we lost it. Some of us, we lost it. We don't have the drive. We don't." Mm. We we can't smile. We, a lady told me before she she said she they asked her to smile when I was put on her lips. So she said I don't smile. I'm like what? How do you how do you oh not no. how do you not smile? Oh man! I so crazy as we smile on myself for nothing. <laughs> I just as we looking at myself. <laughs> I'm crazy. Um, just just again. <laughs> 
Let's go, yeah. Cecily. Um, if you guys want to call in, the number is, I think it's 825-5433. Yeah. I lost. Yes, 825-5433 if you want to call in on the show. We're talking about expectations. Um, but you know what, Italia? I have to tell you the truth. Okay, mm-hmm. so. Oh, Jesus. All right, so. um. <clears throat> Situations and circumstances can cause us to to get to that place right. where there's no expectation in life, where we don't get excited, where we're just like, whatever, just whatever goes, whatever happens. Um, <clears throat> and um, sometimes we're forced into the into certain postures, mm-hmm. right? And we are. Oh gosh, I'm trying to find the best way to say this without. I can't do it. So anyways, so this, this weekend, this weekend, I, I lost the battle this weekend. Mm. I lost the battle this weekend and it was the first time in, hmm, I would say maybe eight or nine months Mm -hmm. where I couldn't fight like Mm -hmm. how I, like how, you know, there there are things that each and every one of us, some struggles that each and every one of us deals with. We mm-hmm. all have these internal struggles, right. personal struggles. Right. And I'm not necessarily talking about sin here. This is not what I'm talking about because that's separate. I'm talking about that thing that could cause you not to get up out of bed one day. I got you. You understand? Mm-hmm. So I've been winning this fight for a good bit. Like I've been, listen to me, I've been kicking this thing to the curb and I'm like, no, I'm go- listen, I'm getting up out of bed today. I got a lot to do. I got to do it. I got to do it. But this weekend, I lost the battle. Mm. I lost the battle. I lost the battle on Friday. Part of Saturday. Part of Sunday, too, if I tell the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, because just because I get up out of bed and I get dressed and I do things out of routine doesn't necessarily mean that I'm fully present. Yeah, I got you. Because we could be present absent. Yeah. Right? And so I lost the battle this weekend. I lost the battle and... um um, I realized that that I intended to lose the battle. Mm, you already made up in your mind. I made up in my mind I wasn't gonna fight. Mm. I chose. Nope, not today. Just gonna give in. I'm. I'm not. No, I don't feel like being great today. I don't feel like being inspiring. I don't feel. I don't feel like doing nothing. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to interact with anybody. I don't want to be responsible. Mm. I don't want to be responsible. I don't. I just, I don't. I don't want to do anything. I don't mm. want to do anything. I don't have it in me today. I don't have it in me today to do anything. So I don't want to meet anybody's needs today because I'm tired of that. I don't want anybody to expect anything from me today because I have nothing to give. And furthermore, I'm disappointed in a whole lot of things in my life right now. So I just, mm. I'm done. No. Just let me just, yeah. let's yeah. start this week over next week. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, let's start life uh, over next week. Uh, and mm-mm. what got me to that place? Mm-hmm. What got me to that place? Okay. As God has been dealing with me. What got me to that place, Italia, was misplaced expectations. Mm. Missed place expectations and what is so scary what is so scary is we can misplace expectations with human beings which is crazy which is dumb but when you misplace expectations when it comes to god you're talking about a whole other level of misplaced expectations Mm. because we i feel like we pretend we pretend like we're not disappointed by god we do we pretend like yeah, he may not come when you want him, but he always comes on time. Y'all stop lying, man. Yeah, I got you. I feel like I got you. Stop lying. Stop lying. It don't always feel like it's on time. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like it's still six years too late. Like, I'm I still waiting. Can, like, mm-hmm. 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 like no, let's let's be real. Yeah, we just don't want to go there. Let's be real. Mind you, you're excited when he comes through because we're excited. For, like, I mean, come on. You have to be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we're happy. We're grateful. We're not ungrateful. We're not going to be, you know, you know we're not going to show ingratitude but let's tell the truth like sometimes like you're like okay yeah god's gonna do this and 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 then he's gonna do it he's he's gonna do it by may 31st 
Is that 31st? 30 days in September, April, June, <laughs> November. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do it by May 31st. Mm-hmm. He's going to do it by May 31st. June 30th comes. And it didn't happen, Italia. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But here's what. I only can speak for me. I know we keep saying this, but I just, I'm speaking my truth. Mm-hmm. But here's what I have to do. Mm-hmm. I have to still lead, lead you in praise and worship, oh, Italia. Mm-hmm. I still have to sit down and talk to up. teens and tell them God is real up. and he's faithful and you trust God, give your life to God because he's the best thing that ever happened mm-hmm. to you. Like I still have to tell him those things. Mm-hmm. In the midst of the situation where I have placed my expectation in God based upon what I believe he said, Mm -hmm. based upon how I believe he was supposed to work a situation out for me, Mm -hmm. and then it doesn't work out. Mm. It doesn't work out. And I think that one of the lies Mm -hmm. that the Christian church is now telling people is that, yeah, you you name it, you claim it, you get it, God's going to give it to you, he's going to do it. Mm-hmm. And and so now you not only end up disappointed in people, but you end up disappointed in God. Yeah. So what do you because, have? Because I think people have to realize um, that our relationship with God isn't just a thing. Isn't just a daddy give me this right. kind of thing, kind of right. relationship. And um, for me, my prayer has always been, you know, I want so much for my 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 business. You know, yeah. I want um, so much for my marriage, so much for so many other things in my areas of my life. But my prayer this week too, those Marisha, you saying that reminds me of my prayer this week. Um, I I told God that if I never get like anything else, any if I don't get you jump in so far ahead of me, but go sorry, ahead, sorry. go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but that That's one, where we need to be, though. Yeah, go ahead. Like I, if I don't ever get any of these things that I want, or is that, or would we see a success? Right, and, right. And whatnot. I said I just want to. I just want this relationship with you. I just, mm. I just want to be right here. I just want to know that, man, I did it with you while I was right here, right now, for real, Marisha. There's some things I've been struggling with too in my life. Mm-hmm. Some sins, I'll say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some sins. Some things I've really been. I mean, like for the last, like, I'm gonna say, like twenty, twenty years or so. Some things you just been struggling with. Yeah. You know, and I say to, and I said to God last week. I said to him. <laughs> I said to him, I said, listen, Lord, all I want is my relationship to continue to bloom in you. Bloom and grow. And you could take me now. I said, that's all I want. All I want to be able to say is, Lord, I took the time with you. We did it. Yeah. I got to know you. We grew together. Our relationship was amazing. That's what I, that's that's the place I'm getting to. Ugh. That's the place I'm. That's the place I'm at. He he allowed those very words to come out of my mouth. <laughs> 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 I ain't gonna lie, that's make me mad when it happened. But I mean, it makes me mad because I mean, the truth is, you're like me. A lot of times we end up in situations where we have to encourage people, right? Right. And it's annoying. I'm. I just want to say it. I just want to be real. Mm. I know y'all think we want to be great all the time, mm. and we always want to be a blessing <laughs> to know, people, right? and we always want to be encouraging, and we. We always want to be inspirational. Oh. No. So <laughs> Girl, uh, there are moments when it's great, but there's sometimes it just be like, God, could you speak through somebody else today? Like, I could know. you use someone else to, you know, put a smile on somebody else's yes. face? Um, but he used my own, like my own words, my own mouth to speak to me while I was sharing with someone. Um, and, and I could tell it was a God thing. Cause it wasn't even like a moment where this person was like, Oh, I have this situation going on. Give me your advice. This person was like, what did you preach to the person the other day? I was like, not a sec, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to share that with you. Because yes. the moment I start sharing that with you, oh, my, my mind is going to be mind. renewed. Yep. The moment I open up my mouth and I release the word of God, my mind is going to be renewed. And I don't want to do that. I don't yeah. want to do that because yeah. I what I want to do I want to stay up. right where I am <laughs> I want to throw my pity party and I just want to stay here no you can't you know and you so can't. I ended up sharing with the person and what the ultimate conclusion was I realized that 
Italia, there are things, listen, there are things that we all want in life. Mm -hmm. There are things that we want to see happen. We have these expectations of what life is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. Things that we believe, like, you know, by this age I'm supposed to do this, and yeah. and God has given me this dream for this, and so this mm -hmm. is going to happen here, and and then, you know, I'm going to accomplish this, and I'm going to go this place, and I'm going to see the world, and, and I'm going to have these kids, and I'm going to get married, and, and I'm going to do all these great stuff, and life is going to be amazing and awesome. And I found myself in a place of prayer one night. I was praying. And I was like, God, I believe you at your word. And I know you could do this. And I'm here rehearsing the word. I'm going over and over and over again. And over and over and over and over and over and over. And he shut me down, literally. Showed me myself, Italia. Mm. And I realized that I could get every single thing that I expect God to give me. And I would still be miserable. Mm. If I had it all. Mm -hmm. And didn't have him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because what he showed me mm -hmm. is that look at what you have now. Look at what you have now. Look at where uh, you yeah. are now. And really consider the fact that five, six years ago, you were praying for what you have now. now. Wow. And you were here in your now. I'm miserable. 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 You're here in your now complaining. Yeah. You're here and you're now saying, but God, I want this and God, I want that and God, I want this. And you haven't yet grasped the fact that, yeah, no, you need me. I've been, yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been blessing and giving all the while. And I'm like, mm -hmm. so, so I found myself, I found myself talking to this person and I said, I said, yeah, so what I realized is that at my core, in my heart of hearts, God, I need you. Mm -hmm. I need you. And that that's it. That's yeah. where it begins and ends for me. Um, I could get all the things that you've promised me. Right. You could fulfill every single word that you promised concerning my life. Mm -hmm. I could get the millions. I could get the husband. I could get the children. I could have the music all over the world. I could travel all over the world. I could do all these amazing exploits, business booming. It can all happen. And I'd be miserable. Wow. I'd be miserable. And I think that, I think that one of the, our biggest struggles as human beings is that when we, when we consider what our soul and our human and like the human nature actually craves, mm -hmm. it's like, we crave something that's so much bigger than ourselves. Yeah. But we try to find it in the things that are tangible. Yeah. We try to find it in the people that are tangible and, and people and, and in stuff, Thanks. you know, in stuff. And I don't know. I've been this, this stage. I don't know what it's like for you now. I tell you, I don't know. I don't know what you're experiencing, but this stage in my life is such a weird, this is a weird stage for me because I'm at this place where I'm like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I go in for it. Like, I really am. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, I have this, like, other weight on the next side of me that's like, but hold on, wait. No, no, no. Don't go. Mm -hmm. Don't go yet. Like, wait a little while longer. Then go. And you know what the fight is? Mm. The fight is, I expect something to fail. Because, you see, we always like to talk about expectations mm -hmm. in light of, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like a positive, negative way. But what what do you do when you're, you're fighting within you yeah. the expectation that you're going to fail at the thing that you're about to, to I, do? I think, I think <clears throat> like, even for me, there's some things um, that I have fixed in my mind that I will do. And I still have that. I still have that fear too. Yeah, yeah. I still have it. I still have the. I don't want to use the word doubt. Mm hmm. It's real though. Yeah, I still have that. But for me, the expectation or the success of it is greater for me than the doubt and the fear. Mm -hmm. It's there, and sometimes it's crippling. And sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I have the energy. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know if I have the energy to do it. You don't know if you can it. commit to it. You know, mm. I don't I don't know if I have it, but it takes. You know. And especially, okay, I don't know what it's like for you. Yeah. 
you know how people like to tell you, well, this is how, okay, perfect example. People like to say, this is what you should do as a single person if you want to be married. Stuff mm. like that is make me mad, babe. All right. I might as well free myself and say it. I hate it. I hate it. Mm. Stop telling me who I have to be in order to find, right. in order for somebody to find mm. me or to whatever. And you shouldn't have However, to be anything in particular. Yeah, like, why mm-hmm. can't just be me? Mm-hmm. Why? Why can't I just be me? Because mm. it's just so easy. It doesn't take any kind of thought. Yeah, no effort. No effort. I could just be me. So like, I gotta. Anyway, I go open that can of worms today. <laughs> That'll be a conversation for another day. But I just have, a, you know, I have a little, I have an issue with that. I have a little issue with that. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you come to me and you single too and you're married. What you could tell me? <laughs> how How can you tell me if me mm-hmm. and you in the same position? The same position. You can't help me. I don't want to be like you. Mm-hmm. Sorry to the person who feels like I'm talking directly to you. I wasn't trying to be insulting. I'm speaking mm-hmm. my truth. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, but it's okay to have those feelings, though, Marisha. But we don't want it to let it cripple us. Where we don't to an inaction, mm. um, or to the point where it pulls us right down to a point of um, depression, or you know, it shouldn't do that. And for me. I get like it just like you. I get to that point where I get so low. I'm like, oh god, I'm not doing anything. I don't feel it. Uh, forget, but forget all your b- bump you. <laughs> 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 but but Marisha, I think over over the years, so you have, and I think you do it too. Um, we get to the point where we recognize it. Yeah, and we, we recognize it, and so we we may wallow in a little self pity, maybe for a few hours, or it may be a day. But we get back. We get back to scripture. We get back to remembering the promises. We get back to, you know, knowing like, you know, we can't let this keep us here. We got to we gotta bounce back. I want to ask you a question um, mm-hmm. before I say what I want to say. Um, well, actually, let me make this statement and then I'm going to ask you a question. I have a friend of mine, really good friend of mine. He doesn't live here. He lives in New Jersey. And he said to me, he said, uh, one day we were talking and I was just, you know, sharing some of my frustrations with him. And he said to me, he said, you know what you need, Marisha? He said, but you don't have. He's like, and I wish I could be for you. He said, but, you know, we don't get to talk as often. He said, you need a cheerleader. Mm. He said, you need a cheerleader. He said, we've been friends for years. When I say years, I met him in, like, 2007. Mm. And we, I mean, like, straight up, like, you know, y'all, mm-hmm. some of y'all don't believe that men and women could be friends. Yeah, like, man. platonic. Listen, this my boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. this my boy. Like, when I don't feel like talking to the people in the Bahamas. <laughs> <Let's call him. laughs> you know we could talk and he said to me he said you need a cheerleader mm-hmm. and he was saying that to me because he realized that like his perspective of who I am and the things that I've accomplished and the things that I've placed before mm-hmm. myself to do is like he's trying to figure out like how come I don't see myself right? like how come I don't see <gasps> like why can't you I see it have cheer- I'm sure you do you- I, I don't have a cheerleader Marisha, you have cheerleaders in mind. where are they or maybe these people need they ain't talking they ain't talking they ain't talking loud enough. You know, you know, and this is gonna pre. This is gonna lead to the question that I want to ask you. Do you know that most times when people see you doing amazing things, they don't think you need an encouragement to do it. They don't. They. Eh? They think that you got it. This is me. Oh man. So here's what I want to ask you before you respond to that, because I know I could see the wheels turning in your head right now. <laughs> I want to ask you this question: mm. Would you consider your husband your greatest cheerleader? Oh well. Am I taking too long to answer? No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I don't know. I don't. I don't think he is. No. Who would you consider your biggest cheerleader? Wow. This could be crazy. Uh huh. Now, by saying no, well, he's not my biggest. Um, it doesn't mean that you know. Obviously, he sees what I do, and uh-huh. he he's always amazed when I I draw and I I, I actually draw, and he always like. You you draw that? Uh-huh. I'm like, of course I did. Uh-huh. I know the truth. Right. And so I know I know he he's amazed at what I can do. Uh-huh. Um and all that kind of stuff. But there is a a, a, a man, a young man, you know, mm. young man, but he actually is way older than me. Uh-huh. I used to work with him as a police officer. Uh-huh. This is gonna be so weird. Right. Right? Uh-huh. Listen to this. He has never really seen my work. No. He's never seen my work. No. I, I dare say he's never seen it. Right? Mm-hmm. He's never seen my body painting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wonder if he's seen any of my artwork. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Uh-huh. But he doesn't, he, he can't really speak to my work. Right. But we, we worked on the same shift. 
And this man, the, 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 let me tell you how our conversation would go. The, what he would tell me, he's like, "Wow, Talia, wow." See, you know you're, you know you, you know you're supposed to be a millionaire, right? Right, right now, you know that, right? You know, you know that you're different. You're, you're, you're special. Mm-hmm. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. And I tell you, no lie. And for years, this is how our conversation is. When if he see me, if he sees me right now, he will be like, "Oh man, Talia, wow, you're just so amazing." I tell you no lie. And this is how he sees me. This is how this man sees me. And so whenever I get to that point, I'm, all, I'm always like, gee, help me to see, see myself the way he sees me. <laughs> he sees me. I mean, he, 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 I mean, he just, he just, blew, uh, it's just, it, it's, it leaves me speechless, <laughs> honestly. The, what, what he says to me. That's a blessing. But he's and and every now and then, so I don't obviously I don't see him as often no, but now, I understand what you mean. But every now and then I see him, and he's and like, he says the same thing. But honestly, it's the same thing with my friend in Jersey. He's like never right. ever like been there when I'm doing ministry, when I'm that's speaking, a, that's or a right there, Biz. But you know, he says he doesn't feel like he can really be the cheerleader that I need. Oh, you know, well, no and man. so, um, so he'd be like, yeah, you know, um. You do, you know, I can encourage you every now and then. Yeah, right. But that for me, for me, that's, I guess that's all I need. Because even when I don't hear him, I still hear his words in my ear. You see? Right. I still hear his words in my ear, you know, his encouragement. Um, and, and again, you know, he goes in detail of, you know, what he sees when he sees me. Um, but I, I'd say I have, I have been blessed. I have um, a few, my, 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 um, my sister's. In particular, Jaconda. Mm-hmm. Um, she's indeed, you know, been a, a cheerleader for me. That's encouraging good. Encouraging me. That's good. Um, you know, in this journey. She always says, Talia, you know, make you the best makeup artist in the Bahamas. You are. <laughs> you are. She says, she says it all. She says it all the time. She says, I wish people could you see. Are. I don't know why they don't see, but you're like the best. You are. Um, she says it. Um, and you are. I mean, I tell you, nobody else touching my face. <laughs> I mean, if we had this discussion, I mean, like, you could yeah. be gone by the time I did, so that's why I get cremated. Because, I mean... You said the second time you didn't say this, now I rebuke that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm saying that you're yeah. going to be gone because, I, I mean, you. you're older. I right. mean... I got you. I you know? Got you. Mm-hmm. But... And then I want to sing at your funeral. Yeah. Oh, please. <gasps> I want to sing at your funeral. So, mm. um, you know, and so... I mean, like, if, if I'm going to die after you, right. like, there's no way somebody else is touching my face. So I have to get cremated. It's just logically. It's just, <laughs> just logical. Um, <laughs> no, but no, you really are. Mm-hmm. You really are. You really are the best. Wow. You really are the best. And if anybody else um, is insulted by that, that's their business. But yeah. you're the best. Um, and there's nothing wrong with being the best. Um, there always has to be a number two and a number three. Everybody can't be number one. No. You know. There's only I one, think that's it though. One. Why do we feel like we always and I think for me, like why do I I think I feel like guilty, like for feeling like I'm really, really good or sometimes I find like I I, I may downplay myself because I don't want people to think that I'm full of myself or I don't know. Why do I do that? I feel like here's what I here's how I feel. Thanks, um, Joe. <laughs> I feel I feel like this. I feel like you have so many other things going on in your life that mm-hmm. humble you. The thing that you do well, celebrate it, man. Celebrate hey. it. Celebrate. We have so many other flaws and so many other struggles and so many other hey. issues and, and parts of ourselves that causes us to be like, girl, you're stupid sometimes. You just do some <laughs> dumb stuff. Like, what, what is your problem? We have enough of those things in our lives, mm-hmm. in our lives, where, like, if you have something that you do well, mm-hmm. celebrate that, man. Hey. Like celebrate it until oh wow, <laughs> celebrate, <laughs> celebrate it until you can't celebrate it anymore. Oh, wow. um, our time is just about coming gone, but wow. um, it's it's flowing by today. But celebrate it, like celebrate it. Um, you can make you probably gonna um, trust me for saying this, but I haven't found that thing yet that I can celebrate with myself. No, no. What? I haven't found what? it yet. I know. I Marisha, know. I know. I you know. better not cause me. I haven't figured it out yet. I haven't figured out that thing that I think that I do oh. so well that like other than singing. Seriously, mm-hmm. Marisha, are you serious right now, Marisha? Marisha, 
Mm-hmm. Are you serious right now? So I think it's time for us to end no, our ain't show. No, <laughs> And but but mm. but guess what? But guess what, Marisha? Sometimes I feel that way about me and my craft. Or is or could it be? Could it be, Marisha? Could it be, Marisha, that we have set our, our, our um, we have set the standard so high for ourselves when I mean, we haven't reached that standard mm. that we feel like we're still not good enough because we're not doing the thing that we know we're supposed to be doing. That's how I feel. Is it? Is it good? Is it good if no one else says it's good? <laughs> Someone said they can need to repent right now. <laughs> is it good if nobody else says it's good? It's good. Is that? Yeah, man. This I is, don't need anyone. This is, I don't need anyone, or we should not need anyone to affirm us. This it's is good when it comes. This is a conversation I've been having out mm. loud with God. You know, sometimes okay. we just have conversations with God in our head. Yeah. This is a conversation I've been having out loud with God. Because it's like, God, you did everything that you did in creation story. And then you turn around and you're like, like that's good. That's basically what he said. He's, He's like, said- and God saw it. And he said, it was uh, good. Who said it? God saw it. He said it. Yeah. Okay. Hush, okay. hush, okay. hush. They okay. tell you I'm having this conversation with God okay. aloud. So I'm like, God, mm-hmm. I said, like, God, mm-hmm. how did you look at what you did and said, this is good. Now, let me tell you the truth. There are times when I put an outfit together, Italia, when I dress myself, like I put on clothes, and I'm like, this she is good. Ahead, Michelle. You need to WhatsApp that to her. I mean, um, direct message that to her. Um, there are times when I when I when I get dressed mm-hmm. and I you know, I put myself together and be like, Yeah, yeah. you look good. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah. No, Marisha. I just See, don't, I just don't feel like I've hit that Yeah. Fine. Like right, that means you're on your way. I just, it just don't feel like it. Like it's. I've never been invited on the show, so much. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't feel like Bishop it's. Just came on in. I just don't feel like it's good. You have to pull a mic because we're plugged into I've the. We're plugged into um. To the, <laughs> we're plugged directly into the sound bishop. So if you want people to hear you, you're gonna have to grab a mic. Okay. Um. Well, so. One, two, one. Just give me a second. As I'm trying to multitask here, but one one second. Okay, now we can hear you. Check one, two. So, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I I was never invited on the show before, and the show started. (laughs) You're not even in the the video um, thing. I'm in the video. No, it's like centered to only fit us too, so you have to move the camera so we can see you. Oh, that's only JJ video. That's only JJ video. Mm. So what I'm saying is, um, Italia, and I really didn't want him to walk in here at this part because he he'll rebuke me too. Mm-hmm. But um, you want to turn the one so you can see me? I am. This is my show, mm-hmm. right? So <laughs> what? Um, Let's put the wide lens on it. Oh gosh. Want me to do that for you? So you can do it. That would be lovely. Okay. I'll let you do so what I what I have to say is I I would have to say that's my biggest struggle, honestly. Like, I want to be able to say, like, I do this one thing really well. That's what I'm saying. You've set a standard. There's something in your head that you've said, um, I need to be able to, I want to achieve this. And when I achieve that, yeah, you know, for yeah. me, I have that. And for me, I have it too. In fact, I, 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 I wrote it down. You did? Yeah, I wrote it down. Um, there's an international competition that I want to be a part yes, of. Yes, yes, we were, we were ah, having this conversation. Bah, yeah, bah, we talked bah. about this. Yeah, so that's the that's the goal. But it doesn't mean that what you're doing right now isn't great. This lady just shared. She said, you don't know how your voice has gotten her through stuff. I'm sure there are many other people who can say the same thing. I had a conversation with a, with a very close friend of mine that, um, the other day. Brought her to tears. And she's telling me, Tal, you don't know how much times you've done my face. And I went home suicidal. I'm like, what? You serious right now? Yes. You know when people sat in my chair? I remember a lady. She sat in my chair. And the only thing she could do was cry. Oh, my God. She just started crying. Our our gifting, and you know this, opens the door for people to just be open to us and share. I may. You don't feel. You don't feel sometimes though that the the, the things that we do, like, how can I say it? Like, they don't reach people the way that you expected it to reach people. Does that make sense? Well, I 
I never expected her to say and do the same things that you do. Like, I was like, when she started talking, I'm like, what? Um, our, the topic of our show is expectations, by the way, mm-hmm. Bishop. Um, and we're, and so, I don't know. I feel like, like you said, it, we set these standards, these expectations, where we think like this is how it should be, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna tackle this thing that I'm gonna do, and like this is what it's gonna look like, mm-hmm. and then it don't look like that. So, I keep trying. I think, I think that's where our challenge and that's where we mess up. We make more impact from our being than from our doing. Mm. And so what we, we, it's so easy to get caught up in this idea that I got to do more. And so we try to mm-hmm. do this and I feel like I'm not doing enough. Isn't that usually the place? Yeah. I'm not doing enough. I need to do mm-hmm. more because I wanted to do this and I want to do the other. And you, and we fail to realize it's not our doing that changes people's lives. It's our being. being. What you did with the girlfriend's face, you did absolutely nothing. You were just being who you are. And from the place of being, mm-hmm. you transform that young lady's life. Mm-hmm. You, you f- singing for Marisha and all the things she does is so natural. Like, I ain't doing that. money to do more. And you right. You realize that. I said right there. It is from your being Not that you're going to have so the easy. most effect. You will have the greatest impact from your being, from your doing. And many of us, Jesus says, run the race. The word of God says, run the race that's set before you. I have given you something that's before you that you're actually doing now because you're functioning from the place of your being. And nothing that you add, nothing, no action that you add will make you no more you. What you're actually going to do is impose you on that action. Mm -hmm. So it's still your being that's going to create the change. It won't be what you add. Start meddling. You know, so so I got to start a new business. Oh, Denzel, start a new church. No, that's not what's going to change people. It's who I am that's going to change people. It's not what I do. I impose who I am on what I do, and that's what creates the change. It's not the doing. So you don't need to release ten more ample albums so you can touch people. Or I need to do this album so I can touch. No, you are being you, mm. and it is your being. It is your being. So you can decide. You know what? I can open ten more stores so I can do more for mm-hmm. God. No, 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 no. That's not gonna do more for God. You can do it if you want. You can open a thousand stores, but it's your being that's gonna change lives. He's more concerned that we be who we're called to be, not that we do more, more. that we be more of who we are wow. and release the us in whatever it is that we're doing. Whatever we do, we just release us in it. But people say and that's a word, Bishop. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a word. Oh, Thanks. That's good. Yeah, yeah. You need to ask permission to come back on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. when we realize I that, we <laughs> then calm. Um, I forget this. Christian radio. Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> you can't say so, you forget it's Christian radio, you the bishop. No, I guess. Oh, I guess okay. 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 I'm on that side of the mic. You're Mr. Roller. Yeah, on that side of the mic, I'm okay. the bishop. On okay. this side of the mic, I okay. guess okay. Okay. just okay. Just Yeah. It's but we got to calm yeah. down and just oh, be. See, that panic place causes us to stop being. Yeah. We're too anxiety, panicking. And so, anxiety. oh God, I got to do more. I got to this. Oh God, I ain't making this. Mm. My profits are down like this. Anybody call me the same this month? Or oh, they didn't clap that much. For no, I'm being. <sighs> you know, Bishop. Like I don't know, and this this is a this is a uh, this is a conversation that Atali and I like. We we have this conversation off camera a lot too. We talk mm. about this stuff all the time. Mm. The the idea that that like there's just so much more that not only that we want for ourselves just because we're having girl talk. So as women, there are mm-hmm. things that not only just that we want for ourselves. There are things that we see, mm-hmm. like we see it. And we know, like, this is going to be amazing when this happens. Like, <laughs> this is just going to be, like, off the chance. And there are a lot of us, when we get into that thing mm-hmm. and when we start to live in it, mm-hmm. it does not, like, it absolutely does not meet our expectations. Mm-hmm. And that is really where we really wanted to end up today in our conversation. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Yes. Okay. So we're considering all things here. We're considering the God thing, but let's consider the human thing too. The things that we, we do, Mm -hmm. the things that we plan for, Mm -hmm. the, the relationships that we get into, the child that we have, Mm -hmm. the businesses that we open, the job that we apply for, the position that we apply for, we decide, I'm leaving my job. I'm going to open a business. I'm going to cook for people and serve them food. Whatever it is that we do, we 
we do this thing we get in it and it's it's not what we expected it to be um i i can you, I, you said a lot to tell me man don't go that deep holy ghost stuff man come another way that's i, I heard that i heard that that's what you said <laughs> No, then, no, 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 know, no, 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 no. I was, I, I was including everybody. I wasn't you know, saying don't go yeah, there, but I'm, I wanted to include everyone because that's how we talk. We talk where we make sure we try to include absolutely. everyone in I our conversation. It. I love it. This is one of my favorite shows on Blue Night. Oh, whatever. Oh, way, I love this show. <laughs> I really do. Um, let me say this. Number one, whatever that thing is that's in your heart to do, you didn't put it there. No. Further than this, I've, I've known her. This is my first close cousin. Yeah. She got close to me before she was my cousin. Yeah. So we got like really, really close. I met her through you. Right. Mm-hmm. So with this, 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 this Mariah that She became here. my makeup artist because of you. Glory to God. I should be getting the cut on your... Dollar <laughs> 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 okay. nine, you should be getting... Buy something. Hallelujah. My gosh. But mm. I have watched Italia Williams, now Wilson's life unfold. She didn't do anything. Wow! It manifested the things. I've I've been here. I've been here for the ride. Yeah. I've been. I've. I had this seat right here. For at least now, about for at least about seventeen, eighteen years. Oh. This close. This close, close, close seat. Now we was close for like more than that, but this one right here, this seat here, I had this one, where she actually sat down, just opened the whole thing up. Right. She didn't do this. The person across from the mic. Mm-hmm. I've had this seat in her life now going on uh, long, Almost going 13, on but 13, 13 or so years now. Years. Mm-hmm. You didn't do this. Mm. And I think when the way we, we relax and we calm down with these expectations, when we realize what we're living in now, we didn't expect this. No. This is not the fruit of an Where we are right now, mm-hmm. no, no. This is our steps being aligned. Uh, so we ought to plan. Yes, we ought to plan. We ought to say we want to get this. We want to get the other. But at the end of the day, I, I, I back to the scripture text again, and I know those of you who are not Bible Bible um, um, totals, or you may not. I know these scriptures, but listen. I think one of the most powerful scriptures is this: Run the race that is set before you. Run the race that is set <laughs> before you. Be be complete in the fact, or be satisfied in the fact that I released myself in this. Now, mm. it's not to cause us to become mediocre. Right. And to say we don't give our all and we just, however it happens, case of Asura, no. We empty ourselves in this and we trust him that has ordered our steps before we even got here. That as I'm emptying myself, not heaven is happy because I'm, now mm-hmm. when I am not being myself, that's the problem. What? Of course, like the giftings of both of you persons are amazing, the two of you. But you're not the greatest in the world at what you do. But it is what you add. The you-ness of what you do is what it's makes it. you unique. Mm. It is the you. Dens is not the greatest preacher in the world. Marisha is not the greatest singer. Jade is not the greatest makeup artist. Now, we're all the greatest that we know in these things. But we're not the greatest <laughs> in the world. But, <laughs> but it is not... I think you're talking about yourself, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is not. That is not what has given us what what we have. Yeah, yeah. Is that we have released the authentic, the authentic Denzel, the authentic Mauricio, the mm-hmm. authentic Italia into what we do, and that's what has caused it to work out the way it's worked out. Now we need expectations, but I think we got to be careful with expectations mm-hmm. because the question that we must ask: What's the basis of our expectation? Mm. And in many instances, the basis of our expectation. Watch this: is comparison. Ah, jeez. That's why expectations are dangerous for many of us because they are formed based on comparison. Ah, comparison is the thief of joy. Absolutely. So we need to reevaluate expectations. My expectations now, and it's not because I'm preaching, I, sh- I should take this cross off. Not because I look like the Rev and the Bishop. My expectations are are you happy? I expect to please him. So I have lost the expectation of numbers of, I honestly, as I'm an engineer by profession, numbers is what I do. But I have lost quantitative analysis. I don't do that no more. I do qualitative analysis. What's the quality of what I did? Mm. Not the quantity. That's really good, Bishop. So it's no longer about about quantities. It's about the quality. I want to make sure this is at its fullest 
potential that I'm releasing the fullness of who that I sense. am. The fullness That's of good. excellence. That's so good. Because I'm telling you, more often than not, the expectation that we set is based, number one, is, is based on comparison. Number two, well, sometimes we compare it with ourselves based on what we did last time. So we yeah. set these expectations. And a lot of times we set expectations for acceptance. Ugh. We set our expectations for acceptance. No, you I'm guilty do that. of that. You can't I'm do guilty. that. No. So but when when the thing that you do doesn't cause you to be accepted by the people or into the environment or the room mm-hmm. that you thought it would get you into, then you failed. Yeah. You beat up yourself. Like you failed. failed. No. You failed. No, we we set goals. My degree is in planning, so I I, I set goals. Mm-hmm. I'm like that. You you know I'm like that. I mm-hmm. need, I, mm-hmm. I have benchmarks that I want to make. But at the end of the day, I just want to be all out. I'll make sure I'm all out. And if I know I'm all out, I'm happy. I in, y'all should invite me to the mm. show, man. See, I had to force, um, all you people who were watching, I had to force me onto the show, and I'm really enjoying this. And <laughs> I would love to be invited I'm just saying that to be a part of this. I, this I so can't amazing. do this on your shows. I can't just you walk choose, into your shows you choose not to. and Th- just and that's my story start me. talking. You choose can't not just do that. You choose not to. Especially not when the room full of a bunch of men. Can't do that. <laughs> we enjoy it. Though. We that's, want your perspective. That's a lie. That's we, not we the truth. We gotta do a double date. Double? Something. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like a girl talk like meets barbershop mm-hmm. talk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I like the date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could do, we could do, we like could do a, a, a girl talk meets yeah. barbershop talk date. That would be interesting. Yeah, I think it would be crazy. I know that. Yeah, it could be crazy. It could be crazy. <laughs> it would be crazy. Crazy is the best word to use. We, I hope um, help your listeners. Listen, yeah. this was amazing, Bishop. Yeah. And, and we are like so over time and out of time until it ain't oh, funny. I'm sorry. I'm going. Um, no, 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 it's okay. We got started yeah, late. I could. Mm. Yeah. You're good? Mm-hmm. You're good? Yeah, I'm asking. But I, we, we were supposed to have a show playing at 1230. And it's okay. now 1253. Okay. So we got <laughs> to oh, get like, out of here. Tell them the... Studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I def- I apologize to her, but I'll, I'll to definitely um, give Pastor Monica a call so I can explain to her yeah. um, the details. But I think this is this is Bishop. What you did was you, you really opened the door into what what we would want to talk about next week as we continue our conversation because we opened it in our first show mm-hmm. about staying in your lane. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's it. And we, really we really need to open that can of worms. Mm-hmm. But we we can open it from a girl talk perspective because mm-hmm. Italia and I, we have some grievances. We have mm-hmm. some things we want to talk about. Everybody don't, everybody don't need to be taking pictures and and selling clothes and yeah. putting makeup that's on your face. That's and a difference. Mm. That's, that's different altogether. That's, mm. No, you stay in your lane. Yeah. 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 <laughs> stay some, in your lane. Some things I see in out there. Both you really and shouldn't and be doing it. I saw people adver- ad- advertising their makeup, and I'm saying, like, is this the before? <laughs> <laughs> I go, this, this, this is after the Run the race <laughs> this, this, that is set before, before, before you, you man. Go on, Come go on, on, man. Go on, go on. Yes, but that's, you. thank you so much, Bishop. Yeah. But that's what our, our next conversation is going to be about. Um, this this conversation today about wow. expectations took a turn that I did not yeah, expect. Yeah, that's that, that what Pastor just said right there for real. <sighs> It got me kind of rethinking some Yeah, things, no, it got you know? me. It has it's definitely perspective. Yeah. Um, um, I don't think we realize how much of what we do is um, as a result of us looking at what others are doing. You know, and, and because this is happening for someone, we feel like, okay, I'm doing the same thing. I'm this should so be happening. guilty of that. JJ. This should be I'm happening. I'm so guilty of that. For me too, I think. I'll be all. So guilty, you know. Like, when we should be looking at, um, again, like you said, the 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 the, the, the race that has been set yeah. before you. And Oprah said it. Oprah said it too. And and she uh, she talked about, you know, we have to put our blinders on. Yeah, we have to put our blinders on, yeah. and um, and you know, focus on what we have been given to deal with. But you know what you I know? complain about? I complain about this, and I'm realizing this is so good. Um, and we're getting ready to close now, but I complain about the fact that I want somebody to pattern what I'm doing after. Mm-hmm. Like, God, you can't just play somebody in front of me where I could, okay, so they did it. That means I could do it. Mm-hmm. And he, he ain't doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he ain't doing Only it. You. And you could do it. So it's like, and I'm sure I'm not the only person that feels that way. Mm-mm. That like, 
you're striving towards this thing and you're like, God, place something like some sort of person or something in front of me that says strive toward this. No, Mm -hmm. no. And it makes it difficult because there is no, you know, there's no picture. It's not like, it's not like when you put a puzzle together and you see the picture on the box and you know, you just have to follow that. It's hard. It's it's not like sometimes that. Sometimes you feel you lost. Like yeah, gosh, like where am I? Huh. And don't don't let failure that. happen in the midst of what you're doing. Yeah, you know. It's and then you're just like, it. oh man, no man, yeah. you know. And so there are just oh my gosh, there's so um, many things that we mm-hmm. could say mm-hmm. that we could. I think the number one thing for today is that we have to. We have to simply just be ourselves. Mm-hmm. We have to be ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't really have that cheerleader. We didn't finish that cheerleader conversation. No. But that. I just want to say to uh, like to every single individual, to every woman that's listening, males who are listening, whoever's listening, listen, if you don't have a cheerleader in your life, be somebody's cheerleader. Hey. Like, even if you never get it, if nobody ever like says to you, like, go do it, like, go be amazing or you're great or like mm-hmm. continue to like be, be intentional in being somebody's cheerleader. Whenever you see them, you encourage them and tell them they're doing an amazing job. Mm-hmm. Like they're so gifted at what they do mm-hmm. and don't ever stop doing what you're doing. Don't ever stop being who you yeah. are because you're a blessing to people or you're an encouragement to people. You're an inspiration to people. Be somebody's cheerleader. You have no idea what that could do for a person you have no idea and it does not matter how great that person may be in your eyes how amazing they may be it doesn't matter your perspective just be intentional and be somebody's cheerleader like for real you have no idea the impact that you have um in taking that approach anything you want to say atayo um no she said it all um because i believe in encouraging everyone um, in my in the chair that I sit in, um, we use that as an opportunity to, to yeah. encourage mm-hmm. um everyone that passes through because a lot of people could do with makeup and getting makeup done. They feel like they're not beautiful, they're not pretty. Yeah, and that's my time to reaffirm and to cheer them on and let them like, listen, you're amazing, you're beautiful, um, you're fabulous. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, guys, that's all we have for today. Yep. Next week we can talk about staying in your lane. Mm. Oh. I can't wait. It's going to be good. I think that's going to be a different kind of show. This one was kind of somber and yeah. and really thought provoking. Yeah. And this really is, got me thinking. This is a heavy show. Yeah. Because anyway. <laughs> this is a heavy show. Again. You know, right? This is a heavy show. Yeah. So we're going to we're gonna have um, our conversation next week about stay in, mm. stay in your lane, boo. Stay in your lane. Be all over Thank you for all of you who tuned in on Facebook Live, Ooh. all of you who sent messages Thanks, and mm-hmm. who tuned into Taya's Facebook, um, yeah. my Facebook, who sent me WhatsApp messages. Thank you so much yes, for tuning in on the radio. Hey, Xavier, that's Lady yeah. Pow. <laughs> She's tuned in. Thank you, all of you, for tuning in. Yeah. We're going to be here next. <laughs> I hear you, Andrew. Antonia was tuned Samantha, in too. Chandra. Your girl, Antonia, she was messaging me. You're lying. Yeah, Brittany. so thank you so much, Why she everyone. You? She, she sent me, me a WhatsApp. Oh, Johnette, I got you. We see you guys. So thank you so much. Next, next, next week, we got to make sure. Um, we got to share. We got to do up. Yeah, we didn't so sorry, do. Sorry, guys, we didn't get to share your thoughts. But we'll we definitely. We'll definitely be more intentional with yeah. that next week. Well, this has been another girl talk. Hopefully, we'll have a jingle soon. It's girl talk. Talk to me. Talk to me. It's girl talk. Talk to me. Talk to me. It's girl talk. Talk to me. Talk to me. It's girl talk. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in here all day. I ain't no singer. <laughs> <I know, right? laughs> you can rap though. <laughs> Pastor Monica Haskell is coming up your way in just a few moments. Manifest with PM. She's talking about how to get your dreams from your head into your hands. You're tuned into Midday Glory here on Glory 93.9 FM. Keep it locked in. See you guys. You did more than I ever expected. You did more.